I am doing a video on the Calgary Expo fiasco starring the Honey Badger Brigade, when I happened to come across this article I am about to read an excerpt of, and I just felt like there is something really important about the article that warrants its own video. I'm writing this part of the post in response to the MRA slash Gamergate booth controversy. In summary, a men's rights and Gamergate group was given a booth at Calgary Expo. The group was expelled from the conference on Friday morning and asked to take their booth down and leave the premises. Calgary Expo has released a full statement on the issue. I do not personally know the comprehensive or official reasons why this group was expelled from the con. The Mary Sue covers the story well in a full post here. The only thing I would like to touch on is the use of the word Gamergate. Please do not approach any woman-centric panel with the guise of addressing ethics in games journalism and say you are part of Gamergate. Women in gaming do not want to engage with you and will feel endangered by your presence, this ensures no hope of an intelligent discussion taking place. This is a direct response to the massive amounts of harassment that women have received from the Gamergate movement in the past year. They are completely within their right to remove you from a space. Especially taking into account that Gamergate has become so terrifying that they have threatened to bomb women in games panels, they have threatened school shootings, they have doxxed women, and threatened them out of their homes. Therefore if you associate with Gamergate, regardless of your position or intentions, you appear as a threat. Gamergate is the mark of a terrorist organization. The you have it folks, zero tolerance for Gamergate, I will be linking to the article, she says that the women on the panels, will feel afraid of Gamergaters, but let me ask, why shouldn't people be afraid of feminists, let me guess, because the definition of feminism is, the advocacy of women's rights on the grounds of political, social, and economic equality to men. Well that sounds just fine and dandy, hey I wonder what the definition slash mission statement of Gamergate is? Definition, Gamergate is a reproductively viable female worker ant that is able to reproduce with mature males when the colony is lacking a queen, oops, wrong definition, that was an insect, ok, let's try this, Gamergate is a consumer revolt triggered by the overt politicization, ethical misconduct, and unprecedented amounts of censorship targeted at gamers and video games as a whole that is presently being perpetrated by many entities within the industry, and as Sarah Beck, author of the article I am responding to, wrote, please do not approach any woman-centric panel with the guise of addressing ethics in games journalism and say you are part of Gamergate, ethics in gaming journalism is what Gamergate is about, however, she claims that it is merely a guise, as in a deceptive pretense. Well then, why can't we accuse feminism of being man-hating bigotry with the deceptive pretense of being about gender equality? Why is it feminists can hide behind a colloquial definition, but Gamergate can't? And Sarah Beck says that Gamergaters have harassed people and made threats and should be classified as terrorists, but feminists have harassed, made threats, intimidated, and has a history of committing and encouraging violence and murder. It was just a few years ago we had feminists breaking the law in Toronto, blocking doors to a Warren Farrell lecture and then illegally pulling fire alarms to disrupt a meeting held by cafe, and just recently anti-gamergate has issued bomb threats to shut down a gamergate meetup. Hey wait a minute, I know that redhead. Lizzie. Lizzie, look at you rubbing elbows with Christina Sommers, I followed you on Twitter when you only had 207 followers, I was your 208th, I still say the name Gingerella would have been awesome. So anti-gamergaters are issuing bomb threats, and as the article says, the FBI actually looked into this, an actual bomb threat was actually made, though no explosives found, but people were evacuated, if I were to take Sarah Beck's approach I'd proclaim that anyone against Gamergate is a scary harassing bomb threatening terrorist, and let's not forget about the group Femen, a formerly Ukrainian, now French, group of feminist extremists best known for naked protests and charging naked at their opponents forcing security to restrain and detain them, you've got the social justice warriors like the SPLC and the One People's Project, the former using legal harassment to targeted hate groups, and the latter using personal doxing and personal harassment of individuals pertaining to groups they label as hate, resulting in many innocent people caught in the political crossfire, mislabeled as being associated with, and being stalked harassed threatened and fired from their jobs, along with having their family and neighbors harassed in the process. Admittedly the SPLC is a little more careful about their targeting than OPP, but both hold a double standard of never calling an extreme leftist group hate, but the social justice warrior groups like OPP, along with others, openly admit to doxing, and encourage others to do things like let's give this guy more harassment than the courts ever would, while Gamergate is nothing more than an idea, represented by a hashtag, has no membership, 
no one is officially or unofficially Gamergate, there is no way of controlling who says what under that Twitter hashtag, these social justice organizations, with websites and membership, openly admit to doxing, harassing, and openly encourage others to do it, feminism and social justice warriors, a pejorative phrasing of social justice advocate, used to describe extreme left-wing cultural Marxists, has a history of violence, terrorism, law-breaking, propaganda, harassment, and above all, censorship. The very fact that Calgary Expo had a group of anti-feminists thrown out of their feminist convention, and this feminist journalist claiming the removal of any gamer gator is justified, proves their censorship effort rather well, you know, I can't wait for the day when our cultural shift happens, and articles like Sarah Beck's, are replaced with this. I'm writing this part of the post in response to the feminist booth controversy. In summary, a social justice warrior and feminist group was given a booth at Calgary Expo. The group was expelled from the conference on Friday morning and asked to take their booth down and leave the premises. Calgary Expo has released a full statement on the issue. I do not personally know the comprehensive or official reasons why this group was expelled from the con. The only thing I would like to touch on is the use of the word feminist. Please do not approach any male-centric panel with the guise of addressing women in gaming and comics and say you are part of feminism. Men in gaming do not want to engage with you and will feel endangered by your presence, this ensures no hope of an intelligent discussion taking place. This is a direct response to the massive amounts of harassment that men have received from the feminist movement in the past century. They are completely within their right to remove you from a space especially taking into account that feminism has become so terrifying that they have threatened to bomb men in gaming panels, they have threatened school shootings, they have doxxed men, and threatened them out of their homes. Therefore if you associate with feminism, regardless of your position or intentions, you appear as a threat. Feminism is the mark of a terrorist movement. Like I said, the feminists and the social justice warriors have committed all of those atrocities so many times more than people using the Gamergate hashtag. Furthermore, it has been revealed that in many cases Gamergate threats were false flags to slander Gamergate. Anyone at all can call themselves Gamergaters and use that hashtag. However, I'm sure some people who really do genuinely support Gamergate have probably harassed people, but this is obviously going to be true of all movements. What about Valerie Solana's shooting Andy Warhol? and the feminists who've declared all men should be killed, or support castrating men, or reducing their population to between 1 and 10% of the population, or have described men as incomplete women aborted at the gene stage. Oh let me guess, not all feminists are like that, but if one person tweeting under the Gamergate hashtag says something rotten or harassing, then apparently all of Gamergate is like that, the biggest problem with Gamergate is the fact it is just an idea, and its expression is from an unfiltered and uncensored Twitter hashtag. Anyone can be a member of a fucking Twitter hashtag, and this is why Gamergate is not a movement, but a sudden pissed off reaction to the social justice warrior takeover of the gaming industry starting with gaming journalism. What we need is an actual copyrighted organization with a crystal clear mission statement, membership vetting process, that watches and reports on corrupt gaming journalism, and the journalism of other nerd culture subcultures, that way if someone says Gamergaters harassed me we can say what was his name? Let me know his name so I can check to make sure this individual really works for Gamergate. Because the person whose name was given, can then be fired by Gamergate, and told Gamergate has severed all ties with the individual in question. We do not condone his hateful words, and this sort of action goes against our mission statement, and if the individual in question is innocent, they can sue the person committing defamation and the Gamergate organization could also sue for defamation, a person could say I think Gamergate should be considered a terrorist organization, but they couldn't say Gamergate is a terrorist organization, they could still say people under the Gamergate hashtag have harassed me, but they cannot say members of Gamergate harassed me, anyone can use that hashtag to attack anyone and stir up trouble, this is why Gamergate will ultimately fail to remove corruption in gaming journalism and it is unfortunately a place for angry pissed off anti-social trolls to go to stir up shit and harass any woman under any pretense, and the good people who want this to be about gaming journalism ethics, is rather powerless to stop this, the greatest downside to having an actual Gamergate organization is that they'd be the target of doxing, DOS attacks, and would be instantly watched like a hawk by the likes of the SPLC, and we'd still have feminists like the author of this article saying that Gamergate scares women, because the movement has allegedly harassed women, but at least that'd be the direct and unmistakable mission statement of ethics in journalism, thus not a hate movement, and all threats and attacks coming from people using this or that hashtag, 
would have to be dismissed as a hoax if they cannot be shown to be members of the actual organization. Of course they could still say Gamergate supporters said and did this and that, and that's fine. And of course people are still free to say they think Gamergate are a bunch of misogynists yada yada, but we can always point to that mission statement of that organization, you know? Give them the old dictionary definition. But the thing is, this author, who claims women on the comic book panels would feel afraid of people claiming to support Gamergate, I disagree with that, I don't think it's fear they'd be feeling, it's hatred, when has any notable Gamergate supporter, or even anyone just claiming to be a Gamergate supporter, physically assaulted anyone? not once that I am aware of, so what would a woman on a comic panel be afraid of, if any Gamergate supporter physically assaulted them, it'd be the first time in the 8 months this thing has been around, and they know that, feminists have actually assaulted people, no one claiming to be Gamergate ever has, if anything, Gamergaters ought to fear for their physical safety when they approach a feminist panel in comics, when a feminist walks into a building, that has a gender political discussion that isn't feminist, you should be afraid, you should stand in front of the fire alarm to make sure none of them pull it, because they've done it in the past, and if you don't watch it, feminists will have you thrown out of comic book conventions as they did to the honey badgers, censorship, and pretending to be scared, and pretending to be victims, this is what modern feminists and social justice warriors do best, it's not fear of physical harm the feminists on the panel fear, it's fear that their bigoted and deceitful ideology that they are attacking the comic and gaming industry with, is getting stood up to. Feminists and social justice warriors are famous for banning, flagging, blocking, reporting, and all around censoring, anyone that disagrees, it is vital to them that only they have a voice, they need a monologue, they fear a dialogue, they know their lies cannot withstand the light of day. The corruption in gaming journalism, and comic and all of nerd culture's journalism, is far deeper than pop culture from the colleges that indoctrinate the future communications degree holders, all the way to the small-time journalist positions that those communications degrees buy, to the very top of the mainstream media, and even many of the politicians the mainstream media bosses endorse, and thus rub elbows with, is wrought with cultural Marxism, the ideology of the social justice warrior, including feminism. Their power is great, controls the very top of western media, and they will look out for one another all across the board from the biggest, to the smallest media owners and journalists, to push their agenda, their strength is their lies and their censorship, their weakness is their lies and their censorship, they lie and censor anyone that attempts to expose the lies, but the truth cannot stay buried forever, we cannot fight their lies with our own, we cannot fight their censorship with our own, because they are the ones that hold all the power, we must be as honest as humanly possible, and always open to criticism, and willing to participate in dialogue, we must not fight their safe space with our safe space, our battleground is not a safe space, it's an open debate, a dialogue they cannot censor, is a debate they cannot win, this is why approaching them with opposition is sure to get you banned, people have an inborn dislike and distrust of those who lie, and those who censor, thus if they are the only ones doing these things, then people will begin to distrust and turn on them. Earlier I flipped around the author's paragraph replacing Gamergate with feminist, and women with men, to show what I hope the future looks like, however, I don't honestly want the future to look like that, I want the future to contain open opposition, and here is why, censorship is what breeds tyranny and extremism, a thing, such as a vitamin, may be good for you in a certain dosage, but get too much of it, and it becomes toxic and does harm, any given ideology has the potential to be helpful to our culture, but even the most helpful ideology will become toxic as it becomes too extreme, extreme is of course subjective, I, for example, would be one of the more extreme of MIGTO which some have considered to be the extreme end of the MRM, so I guess that would make me one hell of an extremist. But in 5 or 10 years I may be looked upon as a moderate, extreme is a reference to how far from the norm you are, as a culture changes, the goalpost changes, but ideologies are often born of necessary reaction to injustice, meaning it was a thing necessary and served a healthy purpose, but once it becomes the mainstream, the norm, the people pushing the movement further, are extremists, pulling the norm more in their direction. At some point, it becomes toxic, and then it too will require a backlash against it, this is the social pendulum, allowing debate allows people to challenge the more extreme ideas, society at large can evaluate the competing ideas and weigh in, ultimately this will help our culture to progress, but once censorship is employed, no one can stand up and challenge the extremism, no one can challenge the new direction society is heading in, social justice, in a small dosage is actually a much needed thing making sure people have equal human rights under the law, and encouraging mainstream society to sympathize with and tolerate the differences of other groups of people, 
serves to make a culture strong, but the degree in which these batshit crazy social justice warriors have gone, is no longer helpful, it's toxic, so we must never employ censorship or ban ideological opposition from attending, by the time an ideology employs censorship, it's already gone too far and needs a counter movement, furthermore, and here's where a lot of gamer gators may disagree, I believe there actually is room for the feminist type of discussion in media if it were done in any honest way, take for example the complaint that female characters are all scantily clad and drawn to unrealistic proportions, I'm not a woman or a feminist, and even I have to agree with that, and personally find it obnoxious, I recall as a child looking at comic books, and noticing that practically every woman in practically every comic just had to be standing in a way that positioned her ass to stick up and out, like a cat in heat, and their bodies would always be twisted in ways that would break a woman's spine in real life, all of them have unreasonable sized breasts, and most of them, or at least too many for me to recall, wear high heel boots as part of their costume, yeah because nothing says combat ready like ankle shattering high heels, and even as a kid this did bother me, it shattered the realism, it looked out of place, women drawn in comics look more like someone traced them out of a porn mag, you give the average female comic character a whip to go along with its sexy leather outfit, and that's not a superhero, it's your average dominatrix, and I have no desire to scold or shame the creators of these comics or the people who buy them and like them, and who knows, maybe that's all comic books should be about, drawing unrealistic humans as some kind of sexual fetish. But I think future comic creators should strive to be original and buck the trend, and even the male characters are drawn to make Mr. Universe look like a shrimp, why were these characters built so unrealistically muscular, it didn't give me body image issues or any of that shit feminists bitch about, but I thought it was rather silly, why draw a character who looks like he could pick up a car and throw it, when the rationale behind his super strength is something science fiction or supernatural, because you've already granted the character supernatural power, you could draw them like your average skinny dork, they can still pick up a car, because they fucking have superpowers. and what about suits of armor for female characters in comics? but especially in video games, it was very refreshing when I first played Skyrim and seen the female characters wearing full suits of armor that actually looked like it could protect someone in a sword fight, but how many times have we seen female characters, especially in MMORPGs, whose battle armor looks like lingerie or a steel bikini, and there is room for talk about non-whites in comics or video games, it does seem to me that there is a disproportionate amount of white comic characters, who knows, maybe it saves on ink, I see efforts to rewrite old characters as female, or have them played by black people in the movie versions, but why, why not just create brand new black and female heroes, giving them their own personal uniqueness and importance, why have black actors play the role of traditionally white characters, give them their own unique and memorable characters to play, reminds me of the black best friend, a role every black actor knows they're going to play, and it's really the same character but how about we quit shoehorning useless and forgettable generic black tokens, and start giving more leads to black people. How about this, instead of the 10 new shows that will come out this fall, all having a black best friend, we round up all 10 of those actors, and put them on one black show, that way they all get to play a unique and dynamic character, one black lead is worth a hundred tokens, in video games, once upon a time your character consisted of 5 or 6 blocks, sometimes those blocks were as black as coal, sometimes white as paper, sometimes green, in the days of Atari, it was difficult to make a character, you were typically a small cluster of dots firing dots at blocks, in Nintendo days, most games with characters were made by Asian people, to resemble white people, and race and ethnicity were difficult to accurately produce, Mario, had it not been for the name, and then the cartoon, could have been Middle Eastern, Mexican, Italian, Indian, nobody fucking knows, but in today's games, many of them have character generators where you can customize characters, but I've noticed a lot of them have a difficult time accurately generating a black or Asian looking character, it's like they have a European facial structure, and then you can just make the skin more tanned, Asian people are often impossible to duplicate, perhaps they don't have preloaded racial templates, on the grounds that doing so would count as racial profiling or something according to the social justice warriors, there's no satisfying those people, just like if women in video games cannot be hit or killed, it's patriarchy establishing men as doers and women as window dressing. But if you can hit and kill women, then it's misogyny like Grand Theft Auto allowing you to kill a hooker, not that you have to kill any hookers, but because the choice to kill a hooker, like every other type of character in the game, exists, it's clearly a misogyny game where you just beat up and kill hookers, there is no satisfying these people, 
which is also why I am not too worried about the harm they will actually do to video games, they aren't going to change games to make them more feminist approved, simply because feminists won't ever be happy with any decision, in order to please feminists, all video games will consist of a group of multi-gendered multi-sexual multi-racial multi-religious friends with multiple disabilities having a herbal tea sipping contest, or possibly a game where you are a black transgendered paraplegic lesbian with AIDS, brutally murdering, white male, cishet, MRAs, and in spite of my incredibly low opinion of Anita Sarkeesian, if there is just one point she made, that warrants actual consideration, it's the massively overplayed trope of the damsel in distress. Newer video games do have their fair share of this, as opposed to the days of Atari and Nintendo, it is mostly found in movies, how many movies have the main driving point being, man goes through hell and back to get woman to love him, or man goes through hell and back to save a woman, which often involves her falling in love with him, I am personally immediately turned off from watching any film that involves a man trying to get or save a woman, women need to save themselves, and men need to stop proving Valerie Solana's right. The male is, nonetheless, obsessed with screwing, he'll swim a river of snot, wade nostril deep through a mile of vomit, if he thinks there'll be a friendly pussy awaiting him, I don't know how true to life that is, but it's true to life to Hollywood, how many movies show a man risking harm and risking death? just to save or impress a woman, I don't think it's misogyny or misandry or any form of sexism, I think it's just lazy writing, Hollywood doesn't want to take a chance, so they just keep recycling the same literary devices, one of the most common tropes in Hollywood is will they or won't they, this is where two characters show some kind of interest, there is romantic tension between the two, leaving the audience to ask will they or won't they, famous examples are Sam and Diane from Cheers, Ross and Rachel from Friends, Penny and Leonard from Big Bang Theory, in fact some shows are almost exclusively one man's pursuit of one woman, sure, lots of things happen, each episode the protagonist deals with a new problem, but the main plot of the overall series is will he get that girl to like him, examples include the many loves of Dobie Gillis, Dobie seeking out Thally Meninja, Saved by the Bell, Zack seeking Kelly, The Wonder Years, Fred Savage's character seeking Winnie Cooper, these are all shows where the main male character, is in a way, on trial to see if he is worthy of a woman's love, and all the problems he faces and how he deals with them, these are tests of courage, resourcefulness, honesty, integrity, resilience, morality, and how it all impacts what the female thinks of him, it's like every episode is a test of character to see if he is worthy of the woman's heart, and I do believe this extremely overused trope is actually damaging, because it trains young men that their life is one big test to win the affections of a woman, point is, there is room for criticisms of gender and race portrayal in various media, and this could actually be dealt with in a manner that enriches the discussion and helps us to push the envelope, but feminists and social justice warriors do not want a dialogue like they say they do, they come in, claim every part of the media and its culture hurt and scares women, we're all sexist misogynists and what can we do to stop hurting and marginalizing women, and then have you banned the moment you disagree with any of their points. I've spoken about the shortcoming of Gamergate being just a hashtag, but another shortcoming is the same shortcoming the MRA suffer, it is not an ideology, it is not a philosophy, it is merely the act of telling someone else to stop pushing their ideology, it is resistance, but not counterforce, feminists enter a field and say we have ideas on how to improve this industry and maximize female consumers, MRAs and Gamergaters say no, don't listen to them. Well who do you think is going to get a seat at the discussion table, the person saying they have new ideas, or the person saying don't listen to the people with the new ideas, what if Calgary Expo invited MRAs to speak at the convention, what things would MRAs have to say about comic books, nothing really, in fact, this was the mission statement of the honey badgers, the tail end goes as such, once the we will start distributing the totalitarian message that nerd and gamer culture is, perfectly wonderful just as it is and should be left alone to go its own way while go its own way could be a cute nod to Migto, ultimately their message translates to nothing should change, well forgive me, but that's boring, no group of people will ever be invited to speak at any pop culture slash nerd culture event where the message is, be a broken record and change nothing, look, Thor is now a woman, ok, maybe that's stupid, but it's new and interesting, same as if I heard did you hear the new doctor who is going to be a black lesbian in a wheelchair, now, I'm not saying the next doctor should be black, or a woman, or in a wheelchair, I am saying you can bet your bottom dollar I am watching at least the first episode, as stupid as it sounds, it actually would be interesting, feminists have the advantage in saying we have new ideas to improve interest to a specific demographic, MREs and gamergators have a disadvantage when saying I offer nothing new, and don't think anyone else should either, 
you can tell feminists to shut up all you want, they won't do it, you can tell people to quit listening to them, but they're going to listen, because they are claiming to have critiques that will make it more enjoyable, a bad idea is worth hearing, people with bad ideas will get more air time than people with no ideas, MRAs and gamer gators have no new ideas, they have no ideology, they are simply reactionary. The only hope in this situation, is that Gamergate can just focus like a laser on fighting censorship, and corruption in gaming journalism, and that corruption being looked at, should, at some point in time, include looking at the corporate corruption between the companies and the reviewers, things like Piola, and the close-knit politics between reviewers and companies, the one thing Gamergate can do in regards to the feminist takeover, is fight the feminist censorship of the industry, feminists will demand that female characters be fully clothed, no nude scenes because that's objectifying women, and no women can get hit or be killed, because that's violence against women, that's misogyny, but this isn't progressive, it's actually on par with the demands of the Christian conservatives, they too think there is too much violence and sex in video games, and TV, and everywhere really, in the comic book world, I don't think feminism can screw things up that bad, if they manage to censor and neuter comic books, well then just buy the ones that aren't neutered, if they neuter them all, start your own. If there is a market for non-feminist approved comics, the first person to make one will have one hell of a large demographic, this is really a self-correcting problem, people are going to like what they are going to like, with video games, it's more difficult, no matter how well you can draw, no matter how well you program, you will never build something like Skyrim, gamers are dependent on large, absolutely gigantic companies sinking millions, and several years, into developing a new game, they could result in neutering the gaming industry, we could, just possibly, end up with the future of games being quick time events, just movies where you press a button at the right time, or choose your own adventure styled games, all of this being story based and politically correct, however, I am doubtful of this, and I also suspect in the future, we will have less pre-packaged games, and more do it yourself games based on powerful expandable engines, with customizable options allowing you to build the game, oops, did I just describe Minecraft, seriously? Look how many people get on a server, and work together to build things in the game, and start adding server side mods to alter the monsters and even create portals that warp you to preset adventures made by others. Imagine this, only not with a game of blocks, but a game with characters and many other objects and mechanics, complete with simple instructions for movement, and dialogue, and voice synthesizers far superior to the one you are listening to. The mechanics involved in building your own game will be far more simple than trying to do this stuff from scratch using Java or C++. I believe this is the future of gaming, and feminists can't destroy that. I am skeptical on just how much damage feminists can do to comic books and video games. But their agenda is simple. Walk into the space, claim there aren't enough women, claim it's because women don't feel safe, and claim evil misogynist sexist rapey men harassing them is the problem. Set up a witch hunt looking for misogynists wait for reactionaries to react to them, call the reactionaries evil woman hating terrorists, thus causing a gender war in the community, and we are a society that values women above men, so women will always win that war. At any rate, the honey badgers were kicked out of Calgary Expo, this feminist seems to think the very fact they made their support of Gamergate known, was good enough reason to have them removed because women feared for their safety, so what ought to be done about Calgary Expo? Alison, the leader of the Honey Badgers who is banned for life from Calgary Expo, says she doesn't want people to boycott or protest them, but I say this, if Calgary Expo invited feminists to have a feminist panel, and they did not invite MGTO or MRAs, and they threw out a group of MRAs for not agreeing with the feminists, it's pretty one-sided, Calgary Expo made shorter only allow feminist narrative, this means they are pushing the feminist agenda, if they would like to push the feminist agenda, then they might as well just be considered feminists. I believe all comic creators, who do not support the feminist agenda taking over your industry and censoring and tone policing your art, should boycott, and encourage the others to boycott the event, and I believe all patrons who planned to make it there, also boycott and encourage others to boycott, Calgary Expo has made it clear, feminists have right to speak, everyone else needs to shut up and agree, since Calgary Expo is anti-gamergate, and favors the feminist assault on the industry, they should be made to suffer for it, hit them in the wallet. Either MRAs and feminists get to have a voice at Calgary Expo, or neither gets to have a voice at Calgary Expo. But if Calgary takes one side over the other, then they are endorsing that side, and need to face the enemies of that side, and I want to talk about something else, we call the feminists and the social justice warriors, leftists, I think we should be careful about that, sure, 
they are currently left-wing, and social justice slash equality, is inherently a left-wing cause, and most feminists today in the West, are on the left, however, feminism can stand on its own two feet even if the entirety of social justice crumbles, feminists have been both socialist and anarchist. They have been on the left and occasionally the right, feminism is, at its core, resentful women looking to maximize women's benefits at the expense of men, and it can fall all over the authoritarian libertarian, left-right, scale. The next thing I want to point out is if you merely refer to our enemy as leftists you give them more allies than they'd otherwise have, most left-wing voters do not support the Tumblr-styled feminists and social justice warriors, it's a bit like neo-Nazis, sure, it's right-wing extreme, but the great bulk of right-wing voters, are not neo-Nazis, these people are a special branch of left-wing extremists, when you blame their actions on leftism in general you give them allies they would not otherwise have, and you diminish the importance of your own cause, turning it into typical right-wing voter belly aching about the left, people's attitudes will be oh boy, one more rush limbaugh hooting and hollering about the liberals, I don't say this in persecution of the right or in defense of the left, I say this to warn you not to diminish the importance and integrity of your struggle, and to not give our enemies more allies by assigning everyday leftists to them. Well, I had a few more things to say, but I decided to edit that out and make it its own video, so I will be releasing another video, about 13 minutes long, tomorrow, as an expansion to some of what I said here.